everyone, my name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. And I am basically turning 27 next week, which is very wild and crazy to say that. And I wanted to do a video talking about 27 things that I have learned before turning 27 or as I turn 27. And also don't mind my dog in the background. She's just kind of doing her thing. I took a few notes actually on my phone, which I will be referring to, and I'll just kind of go through these and I tr I'll try not to take too long because there are 27 things and I don't want this to be like a 30 minute video plus. These are in no particular order, but the first thing is you are your worst critic. So to be honest, everybody is out here focusing on themselves. Nobody is focusing on you as much as you are focusing on you. So I think that we need to be a little less hard on ourselves and not to worry so much about what other people think about us because you know, everyone's gonna have their opinions and whatnot, but honestly, you are your own worst critic and usually what's stopping you from achieving or pursuing the things that you wanna do is yourself. The next thing is your thoughts and mindset become your reality. I think this is so true that I've definitely learned. I'm so sorry about my dog, she's in an energetic mood. So I think because of this, it is really important the idea of manifesting, but also meditating. Manifesting is basically telling yourself that basically what you want to come true in the future you're already living it as if it's going to happen like you're not saying i'm going example i'm going to be a doctor one day you're going to say like i am a doctor it's coming true like i'm already am one but yes so really what you think it really alters how you view the world because you view the world through your mindset through your body and I think it's really important to make sure you really are in tune and check with what you're thinking, where your thoughts are, and how you're perceiving the world because that is so important. Number three, be your true authentic self and the people that are meant to stay in your life will stay in your life. I feel like it's really easy to just mold to what people want you to be or what they say you should be and try to please people. A lot of us are people pleasers and naturally we are social creatures. We want to naturally in a way blend in with people and please people and do, you know, have, be altered and look at what people say and take it very seriously, even if it means altering who we are. And a lot of these are said, are easier said than done and I have to work on a lot of these myself as well. So these are things that necessarily it's not like I've mastered all these things. They're just things that I've learned and some of them I'm you know, I'm happy I did or I've now learned them and I'm implementing them and some of them I'm actively working on so It can be sometimes hard to be your true self if it's being you know vulnerable or doing something that's not typical of everyone else like I have no personal friends that I know that are pursuing like making YouTube videos and whatnot um but here I am doing it and I feel like it's kind of out of the norm, norm and it makes me like almost not want to share that part of myself with them because you know it's not what everyone else is doing. But I feel like it's important to really put yourself first and it's not being selfish at all. It's putting yourself first because otherwise you're gonna not be your truest happiest self and you're not gonna be your most authentic self and I think that's really really important and vital. And if someone doesn't like it then that's their problem and they're not meant to be in your life because I just don't want any of you guys to be molding yourself or changing yourself for others and I think that's very important to remember to just stay true to your authentic self. Okay, number four, communication in any relationship is key. Whether it's with parents, friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, whatever it may be, your dog, something like that, just really anyone. I feel like so many problems in a relationship are caused by lack of communication or just not understanding the other person's point of view or their mindset. You know, deep down on a basic level, we all just want to be happy, we want to be healthy, we want the other person to be happy and healthy, you know, just like the most basic things. So I think it's really important if you have something that's bothering you to tell the other person to let them know how you feel and not just saying like facts but also communicating how this makes you feel and just really letting that other person know the situation whatever it may be and also easier said than done i'm somebody who 
doesn't like conflict for example and I will do anything and everything I can to avoid it which a lot of times means like disappearing and not communicating but I've learned especially recently with a certain friend it's just best to communicate with that person what's going on and then you realize that they although it may not seem from the beginning that they're you know taking your best interests in mind they really are it's just maybe viewed a different way or something like that so basically you know the best thing you can always do is to communicate with somebody number five you are more strong and resilient than you may think and i feel like especially with this pandemic it has shown a lot of us that we are more strong and resilient than we think if we had looked back several years ago knowing that we'd be going through everything that 2020 and 2021 threw at us and come out you know stronger and just learning so much about ourselves i think that we tend to be hard on ourselves, like I mentioned earlier, and not give ourselves enough credit and think of ourselves as weaker than we actually are. You know, like we're our own worst critic, but I feel like it's really important to know that we are strong and we're resilient. And sometimes we are forced into situations like this pandemic in order to really learn that. But I think that we need to give ourselves more credit and just know that we are strong and resilient. Number six, New situations always seem so scary in the beginning, but in the end, they are never as scary as what they initially seem. So I'm somebody that gets stressed and overwhelmed and scared easily. And I feel like with any new situation, whether it's me moving to Australia, which I did in 2018, starting new internships, starting my grad school in 2018 for in DC, which I had to move cross country to, anything new, it terrified me and my anxiety went like through the roof I remember especially in Australia that was really scary and in the end everything was fine like if I had known in the beginning what the end would look like it was always way better than I thought the internships were never as scary as they actually were at all everyone was nice Australia ended up falling in love with that country and in Melbourne which is where I stayed and lived in for a few months and I just this is something I'm continuously working on I do think I'm getting better at it but still not great and I want to get better at it but just remembering that you know my mind tends to overwhelm itself and with something new and it's just really scary and I just hyper go in hyper mode like it's really really scary for me even in like with school every new semester getting a new professor and several new professors and they hand out the syllabus to you and it's like the whole semester so you know what to expect but at the same time every every professor does everything differently and expects different different things and has a different method of teaching and getting that thrown at me by like three to five professors each semester was so scary and just really overwhelming but then once i got the hang of it it was never that bad so just remembering that taking it easy and just working at it step at a time a day at a time and it's never truly that scary okay number seven i've talked about this as well before but the biggest obstacle in your way is yourself so I feel like this is so true, especially with certain people like me that tend to overthink, overanalyze, over worry, and saying things like, I'm going to do this when the time is right, when maybe there's never a right time, you just have to start. And I think this YouTube channel is a perfect example of that because I've been wanting to at least try YouTube for many, many years now, but I always thought it's too late. There's already so many good people. I have nothing to offer. It's overwhelming and scary. What would I make videos on? I'm not good at it. Like things like that. But it's like, you're gonna gain the experience. And so many people started when I wanted to, and now they're very successful at this. So at that time, it wasn't too late. I just was telling myself all these things. In reality, I was the obstacle, but in my mind, I was having all these external things being obstacle. Number eight, if you wanted to do something, especially over a long period of time, it is a sign that you are meant to at least try it and go for it. So for example, going back to this YouTube channel, I was wanting to do YouTube for many, many years and it just, there were days or there were periods in my life where I got busy with school or whatever it was and I wasn't as focused on it and other times I was constantly thinking about it, but it never truly went over 
my head. So if you're thinking about something for several months or especially if it's a year plus, I say just give it a try because you never know and it's a sign that you know you should try it. Don't live with regret because that is not ever a good thing. So just try it, especially if it's just been on your mind for a while. Going into number nine, you will only regret the things that you did not do, not the things that you did do. So I feel like how often do you go back and think of regrets of something you did do versus you didn't do? Like maybe there are certain things, but I feel like especially for me, I think about the lack of trying something. I tend to, like I said, overthink, over worry about things and just like tell myself it's not going to work before I even try it. And so my biggest regret, one of them is just not pursuing YouTube earlier. And you know, I, there may be things in the past I tried, but it didn't work out like a certain internship or something like that. Do I regret trying something and seeing, no, it didn't work, move on? Like, no, it's the things I just didn't do. So number 10, money spent on experiences over material items always are more fulfilling examples like this are concerts and travel for example so i feel like i i do love shopping i do love getting material items if you see some of my other videos you would know i have some purse reviews i have some clothing hauls things like that it's no secret that i like to buy things like you know a lot of people do but and that does make me happy but it does not at all make me happy as traveling as concerts as doing things with friends and family like actual experiences that create memories those are always more fulfilling in the end so if you have a certain budget and you're deciding between buying an expensive bag or going on a trip i feel like in the end obviously everyone's different but i feel like generally the trip would be just more fulfilling now i know with the pandemic that's you know a bit of a different situation but i'm just talking in general in the future and what I've done in the past, I've been fortunate enough to be able to go to a lot of concerts and to travel extensively. And those are just some of the most happy times and ha you know the things that have shaped me the most as a person. And I'm so glad. The next thing I wrote is travel, travel, travel. For me, I, like I just mentioned, was able to be fortunate enough to travel extensively before the pandemic. And traveling is one of my most favorite things and to be honest traveling is something that i wanted to focus my youtube channel on and to make videos on my experiences and my traveling and all that and i've been able to do some of that but not that much because like i, I have not been on a plane in a year now since march of 2020 so there's only so much i can do like i've done some packing tips and some like travel stories and talking about my study abroad experience basically i just recommend for all of you to when you can safely to travel because it is just so amazing to be able to see how other people around the world live or in different states or whatever and to gain new experiences i think it is so incredible and amazing okay number 12 the only consistent thing in life is change. So self-explanatory, you know, there's never going to be something that you're going to have forever. And to just know that change is inevitable and to embrace it. 13, going off that, no growth can happen in your comfort zone, so embrace the uncomfortable. I think the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and wanting and expecting to get different results like that's just not going to happen so if you're wanting to change things which we should all be striving to better ourselves and better different situations in our life or the things around us or whatever and just grow as a person and in order to do that you have to embrace the uncomfortable in order to achieve that so it's not the funnest but i think it's something that has to be done in order to make change happen which change is the only consistent thing in our lives okay number 14 relationships are not a competitive sport now i actually heard this quite recently and i found it to be very interesting and an interesting way to frame relationships so for me i'm in my mid turning into late 20s and i feel like when you get into your 20s and especially the older you get into your 20s when you go on facebook and other social media platforms or just word of mouth you start hearing more and more people getting you know into relationships getting engaged getting married having children and it's just like that societal pressure that you have to complete x y and z by certain ages and to compare yourself to other people you know how can you rush something like 
right now I'm specifically talking about just love and you know partnership boyfriend girlfriend whatever it may be you know how can you rush something like that it all happens at our own timing and it's not a competitive sport and so basically I wanted to say about that that I have on my phone is you do not need to worry about being single instead embrace it and use it as an opportunity to find yourself first because the worst outcome is losing yourself and no longer having your individuality so for me I for a very long time didn't date and for the longest time I viewed it as a bad thing because I wasn't having these experiences as other people and I was like a baby and like a late bloomer and this and that but now looking back I'm actually quite thankful for it because I was really able to be comfortable with myself and to be able to find myself I've heard about girls like being uncomfortable to go to the grocery store by themselves and spending a day alone and this and that and for me that sounds so crazy because I'm an only child I'm an introvert I've been single for a very very long time and like that kind of stuff I love having my alone time I love doing things on my own I traveled by myself I moved to Australia by myself I moved to grad school in DC by myself like I've been doing all these things by myself and I feel like if I had a boyfriend at the time that would have held me back and possibly prevented me from doing those things and those are experiences that I do not want to lose because I was able to learn and really grow into myself okay so I'm actually debating on making a part two because I'm just talking and talking and I'm at like halfway point and I've been filming for like almost a half hour it's really hard to just mention the thing I've learned and move on like I want to give context to everything and I don't want to cut out so much in order to make it fit a reasonable time frame so there's a chance I might make a part two <laughs>